This is a quick video about alveolar gas equation. In this particular scenario, we really want to measure oxygen, which is the most commonly measured alveolar gas. Um, why do we measure alveolar gas? We measure alveolar gas because fun sometimes we want to find out the AA gradient. In order to know AA gradient, we have to know the oxygen in the alveolus and the oxygen in the arterial. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why we would measure alveolar gas. So in this particular uh, situation, our gas is oxygen. So the big A stands for alveolus. The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus is equal to inspired oxygen. PI is inspired oxygen in the air minus PaCO2. The small a stands for arterial carbon dioxide but divided by R. Now if you think about it, so whenever you're inspiring, Okay, you're taking in oxygen in your lungs. Okay, you're inspiring oxygen. Just imagine for a second that you're only inspiring oxygen, and then in your lungs you have only oxygen. But then what happens is carbon dioxide also diffuses into our alveolus, and it kind of reduces that uh, that oxygen uh, level, the ratio of oxygen level. So what we want to do is our inspired oxygen minus that carbon dioxide gas is really going to give us a true idea of what our alveolus, uh, uh, alveolar oxygen is. Okay. Now oftentimes we just know the PiO2. The PiO2 is going to be 150 in general and the Pa, the R value is going to be 0 0.8. So you might have, you probably will end up using the equation like this. Uh, PaO2, the big AO2 is equal to 150 minus P arterial O2 divided by 0 0.8. See how this equation is so much simpler to remember now? Okay, that's it. That's all about alveolar gas equation. So now let's quickly look into a question to see if we can kind of relate it to a question. So moving on to the question, the question says that a 34-year-old man living on the coast suffers from mild dyspnea his arterial blood dr is drawn and shows to be pao2 is about 70 millimeter mercury and pa these are all small a paco2 was 35 okay which of the following is increased in this patient is it lung compliance pao2 p alveolar o2 minus p arterial o2 difference tissue carbon dioxide production lung diffusion capacity left to right shunting, mixed venous blood oxygen content. Which of the following is it going to be? So we have the arterial PaO2 and uh, the carbon dioxide of PaO2. Now we can't really make a judgment unless we know what the oxygen was in the alveolus, okay? So let's see if we can, you know, solve the problem using this equation. So let's go back to this page. So we are going to find the alveolar oxygen. So P big A O2 is going to be usually inspired oxygen is 150 minus P A O2 in this case was 70. Okay. Sorry, this should be P A C O2, my mistake. This should be P A C O2. Uh, no, so the P A C O2 is going to be 35. So I'm going to put 35 here divided by 0 0.8 and when we calculate that we get we get 150 minus 43.75 which finally gives us 106.75 I think so uh, so from this from so now we know that the alveolar oxygen is going to be 106.75 and the arterial oxygen is 70 so the difference is more it's about 36 millimeter mercury what is the normal aa gradient the normal aa gradient should not be more than 10 to 15 millimeter mercury and we are having a difference of about 36 millimeter mercury so the aa gradient is really largely different okay so let's see if we can match one of the answers with this uh with the answer that we got Lung compliance, this question does not really deal with lung compliance, so that's not the answer. AA difference, yes, that is our answer. But what about the rest one? Tissue uh, carbon dioxide production? No, I mean, this question doesn't really deal with tissue carbon dioxide production. And the carbon dioxide was 35. Uh, usually they're close to 40, so that is not my concern. So that is also not the answer. 
lung diffusion capacity? Now that is a possible answer. Lung diffusion capacity can cause a decrease in arterial oxygen than the alveolar ox. But we should not forget to read the question. The question says that which of the following is increased in this patient? And the diffusion capacity should not be increased for this patient. The diffusion capacity should be decreased. So reading the question, we figure out that that is not the possible choice. Left to right shunt, this question has nothing to do with left to right shunt. There is no indication like that. So that is not even a possible answer. And what about mixed venous blood oxygen content? They are not talking about veins. Um, and also that is usually, usually they ask us what's going to be the mixed venous oxygen content in a person who's exercising. So the carbon di uh, the oxygen is going to be low in an exercising patient in a mixed venous blood oxygen content. So that's, that's a different context, that's a different point of view, not related to what we are doing in this particular question. So that is not also a possible answer.